couple seconds. Just check. Gotta love technical difficulties. All right, we are live. Here I am. What's up, everybody? <laughs> uh, Zoom forced me to re-enable streaming to Facebook, so put us behind. Sorry about that. But I know we have a lot of people who RSVP'd yes. A lot of people are excited you're here. I got a very intelligent and long list of questions from somebody named Daniel Walsh. So if we have time, we'll get to those. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is cool. This is the first time I've talked to you live since like 2018, I think. This is the first time I've been live since 2018 in my What? Room. Exclusive right here, Copy Catalyst. Get excited. <laughs> yeah. This is awesome. Yeah. I, I write copy, so I get it. Yeah. So, well, let's talk a brief history here first. So my experience with you was somebody hit me, I think it was you or whoever was working for you, hit me up on Twitter about your book, Ace the Game. And that was crazy because I was hardly ever on Twitter. Somehow I saw that you had this massive like Twitter blast going out. Um, I bought your book, never read it, <laughs> but I got into your coaching group. I mean, I skimmed it, you know, whatever. I was more into like learning from you directly at that time because I was just starting, I was trying to do something other than my um, digital agency. And I was looking for new ways to make money online. And you seem to know a lot about that. So I ended up in your Ace the Game coaching group, one of them, I think the Gold Club. And yeah, the rest is history. And you wanna say anything about that experience? Cause I know like that was a huge book launch it was it did really well for you you got a lot of attention and you did some smart things i remember you had people queued up right and you had some sort of contest going with it yeah it, it was the classic uh internet marketing launch um it was yeah. a crazy crazy uh year really and that was just like one of the many crazy things that happened in it um i guess the main thing i'd remember about ace the game was uh, making ten thousand dollars in the first hour um and that was wild i did it at cross campus santa monica if you know that mm -hmm. uh do you know that what is that um it's like a famous co-working space um and uh yeah so the, that that was a crazy moment um oh my wi-fi went out hold on well we still see you and hear you so something's working <laughs> was that the most money you'd ever made in that amount of time at that point uh, yeah i i i, I mean it was it was a really wild ride and um yeah yeah it, it was just yet another crazy moment in the wild yeah but um yeah copywriting got me here yeah and um it's worth noting too i mean you also had a huge and pretty successful facebook group called traffic and copy which i know still exists but you and charlie price were really like you really built that up big at the time and it was when probably during the peak time for Facebook groups when you guys did that. Cause I know that was one of the things I tried to do to make money early on was to monetize Facebook groups, um, but didn't really do it the right way. So <laughs> I never got that big, but I made some money from affiliate marketing and things like that. But how many members did you grow that to? So traffic and copy got to about 21,000 members. And then we actually ended up deleting a lot of the inactive people. Um, yeah. At various points, I did think that having a bigger Facebook group was better. But now I start to see a smaller group of hyper-engaged people who buy is the most important thing. Um, and I, I'm right, finally writing my book on Facebook organic, like everything you can do within Facebook without paying them. Um, and uh, I think that that's a key point of it. 
you know, a hundred true Facebook friends who are interested in your business uh, mm -hmm. can be enough to make a full-time living. So it's uh, it's still underrated, which is unreal because Facebook has 2 billion daily users. 2 billion. That's too Whoa. big for people to say it's dead. Yeah. I mean, I still feel like it's the best platform, at least for my business. I've tried TikTok. I've tried Instagram. Nothing has really worked as well. Yeah, LinkedIn. well, it's, it's where adults spend the whole day and they think it's work. <laughs> right. So, yeah, so the people with money are on Facebook all day. Um, but yet, yeah, people like shiny things and Facebook is not cool. Yeah, that's true. Well, is there anything else you want to tell people who may maybe have never heard of you before? And then we'll get into your current books. I know you really want to talk about that. And I know my audience wants to hear about that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I, I was on welfare 10 years ago, living off like 72 pounds a week back in East London. Um, and then I discovered how to use the Internet. And it's been one big ride since then. And uh, yeah, that's that's kind of all I do is teach people how to use the Internet to make money, as it has done for me and taken me around the world and best speaker at South by Southwest V2V. V. Um, yeah, and it, it's been a crazy decade doing this. Um, and it just feels a lot easier than doing job stuff, which I wasn't that good at before. So I, I, I do think anyone Same. can do it. Yeah. yeah. You have the classic started from the bottom, now we're here story. You know, it's like all these gurus and entrepreneurs have those, I was on welfare, I was working in my mom's basement, whatever. Um, yeah. A lot of people try to make money using the internet and try to teach people and they can't do it. So, I mean, there's definitely some secret sauce that you have. From my perspective, I think one of them is that you're really good at predicting trends that are going to blow up. So I saw you talking about TikTok very early on before a lot of people were, and now you're doing the same with chat GPT. So when did you know that chat GPT and AI in general were going to be huge and blow up? Um, when I, I mean, it's more like when you start using it, and then you see what people are doing with it. It's so much more undeniable than everything else that's come before it. Everything else that I've talked about, growth hacking, copywriting, funnels, even TikTok. And I think the major difference is all the other internet marketing selling things, you still had to do the work. You know, if you if you built an audience on TikTok or Facebook or Facebook groups um, or drop shipping or any of those things, you still had to do the work. With ChatGPT, it will do the work for you in, you know, 80%, 90% of the time. So I, I guess what I'm picturing and my company is trying to build the mainframe for this is it's kind of like a big version of what you said in your video about the book. If you only have time for five clients per month, um, I would imagine chat GPT will give you so much time that you could maybe take on 10, 15, 20 clients. Um, and people find it hard to grasp what how chat GPT will take jobs. And what I picture, and kind of possibly what I would do if I was starting over is someone who can take on more clients because of chat GPT and because yes. of that, they charge less. And I picture someone with like a hundred clients on screen in front of them, like in a mainframe of chat GPT. And before they could maybe only do 10 or 20 clients per month. So that's 50 or 60 other people's jobs that one person's doing with chat GPT. So that's that right. every industry is going to be very disruptive. <clears throat> yeah. So there's been a lot of fear mongering about, oh no, you know, AI is taking our jobs. Um, and I mean, what, at least in the world of copywriting, 
mentors are saying, yeah, if you're a mediocre copywriter, it might just take your job. <laughs> so it's more about like knowing how to use it and being smart about it. So like, I do want to take on more clients with chat GPT, but I think my goal would be to start more of like a micro agency and take on more projects, farm it out to junior copywriters. That way I can give more people jobs too, who are up and coming and copy chief their work and uh, still be able to like train my team on using AI to do it faster and make more money. Yeah, I, I, I'm finding it's doing more and more uh, copy for me. I mean, I, I thought other people would use it because they're not professional copywriter like me, but it's, yeah, like w w when you have to do 10 pieces of ad copy title, um, I'm finding more and more that I, I can't tell the difference between my own work and it, and it does it in 30 seconds, and that could be like 10, 15 minutes at least, let alone if, if it has to be really, really, really good. Um, but yeah, um, it's a crazy thing that is as good as you make it, like how good you are with the prompts. But um, there's definitely not been anything like it that I've ever seen in business. Yeah, and I, like, I think what you said was key. You don't have to do all the work yourself up front. It's like, yes, a lot of these past strategies and tactics can make you money, but who knows how many hours you're going to put into, you know, building a Facebook group or starting affiliate marketing or launching an offer or whatever it is you're trying to do. Um, yeah. When I wrote my book, all of the 50 ways you can make money with chat GPT, they're all timeless things that yeah. every business in the world needs. <laughs> Hey, that's what there I like to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll that, drop that. a we'll drop a link to your book in the chat too. Yeah, um, yeah. Good. Like I, the the hardest thing in all of business is making an offer that converts. Like people think it's the copy or the funnel or the ads or the audience. If you just have a like, all of those things are actually very tick the box, and you can fill them in. Like you can just Google how to do most of those things or, or, or buy a few of my books and follow the steps. But having an offer right. that people want is difficult. But what's so interesting here is uh, with what I put in the book, uh, ChatGPT can do the work for a lot of these. And there's some services that every business needs. Like when people talk about, do you want my new software? um that auto sends emails uh well some businesses don't use emails okay so you know that that business isn't for everyone you know do you want this software that um will give you ideas for tiktok and help you make them uh, people don't use tiktok but any business in the world if you say to them do you want more leads like they're gonna say yes like yeah there's some services that are timeless and the difference is chat gpt can help you uh, do the work and find the clients and uh, people who are going to get on board with it will reap the benefits. Yes, for sure. Um, so you said you actually use ChatGPT to write a lot of your book about how to make money with ChatGPT. How did, um, what was your process like with that? Of all of the books, the recent one on prompt engineering is the main one that ChatGPT wrote because mm -hmm. that is about itself. So it, it, it could write it by itself. Uh, and it helped me write all of the prompts in the prompt guides uh, so that we had original prompts. And that again should come from the system um and then elsewhere throughout all the books in all the examples of the prompts i put it in but um yeah there, there's websites where you can type one sentence um and the whole book can be written chapter by chapter you can write two words and, and a whole book can be written in i think canvas.ai AI, is it the thing um canvas ai i think so canvas.ai 
Um, and uh, yeah, so it can be done. And yeah, and that's the other thing when you talk about copywriters, it tends to be very, very good copywriters who say, I'll never be fooled. But um, I did a post a little while ago. Here are some screenshots of actual ads that people are paying money for to put in my feed. And the English was broken. There's words missing in titles. Like ChatGPT mm -hmm. could already do a better job than thousands if not tens of thousands of companies who are paying money to put out there. Um, so that's already a step up. Um, and people don't want to believe how disruptive it is because it's kind of scary, which makes sense. Yeah. Well, what that kind of leads to one of my other questions. What do you tell naysayers who think chat GPT doesn't work or think you can just Google stuff and get the same results? Um, well, they're, they're, they're going to be left behind by those who are doing it. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, you might have to personalize the copy a little bit after it comes, you know, after chat GPT spits it out. But I, I don't really worry about the naysayers other than to give them enough rope to make them comment to boost my engagement so that my posts are shown to more people. Um, but not outright trolling because that, that can go too far. But no, I, I mean, I like to think everyone who comments on my stuff and they're not happy, um, they're a, a plant that I've paid to be there to boost my engagement. Oh, interesting. <laughs> That's a good way to think of it. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It, it's my world and everyone else just lives in it. <laughs> Love it. It's a good reframe. Yeah. Um, so like, you know, I've personally been using ChatGPT to help me write my copy for months now and looking to do more with it. But I know you, write about way more than just it helping with copy. What are some other ways marketers can use ChatGPT? Like yeah, some stuff you cover in your book. Um, so the, the stuff I cover in my books in the recently in the personal branding and in the Facebook and Facebook groups, one is the first thing I would do for any business if you're starting out is to use ChatGPT as your coach. So write a very detailed prompt like um chat gpt i would like you to failure proof my next business endeavor i want to be a copywriter making a full-time income of at least three thousand dollars per month how i think i will do it is by joining facebook groups replying to people talking about copy giving value getting people to add me beginning conversations, creating Facebook posts that um, showcase that I'm a good copywriter and then making offers. How do you think my business will fail? Or, or whatever it is you want to do, but asking it something like that and then it can go, well, so it, it will give you all of the problems that you may not have foreseen. Like, um, well, you, you will need your posts to take off on the algorithm or no one will see them um it, a lot of people who spend time on Facebook don't have much money like it, it, it'll come up with a lot of the reasons why it might not work and you can go into a really granular detail and use it as a coach you know it, it's it's read almost everything on the internet up to 2021 oh, that's cool so I I would start with that and then doing the same for your brand like I think my copywriting brand is going to be uh, one that attacks other copywriters um, and says that this way is better than this way and, and then it will analyze that before you even get into the content like I, I would definitely start there but um, yeah failure proofing all of the things that you think are obvious but when you sit with a real business coach you find out aren't that obvious that's super interesting. I hadn't thought of using it that way, but that makes a lot of sense to kind of 
validate your business ideas before you start. But won't this also put business coaches out of a job potentially? Um, maybe, but not in the same way that others do. I, I, again, it's the personalization of the advice. Um, I, I mean, I, I think it's going to take a lot of people out um, and there'll be people again with a mainframe who are the coach and are coaching 20, 30, 40, 50 people through it, perhaps. So for all the jobs it takes don't just disappear. Someone takes them. So right. that, that's why I talk about the urgency of getting into that GPT now. Um, it's just that the, the AI won't replace them, but a human who uses it will. So it'll be a coach with the G chat GPT layer that replaces the human only coaches. Right. So it's, the people who are going to succeed are the ones who are using chat GPT to work for them and work like smarter and faster. Yeah, on my Facebook live here, my friend Ravi said, I asked ChatGPT to coach me as if it was Alex Hermosi and it produced some really good stuff. Wow, that's cool. So you, you can have it coach <laughs> as Steve Jobs or Bill Gates or whoever. I have not tried that. I will definitely be trying that. I wonder what it would say if I asked it to coach me like Ben Clancy. <laughs> There's some information on there. Um, you you really you've got to give it a lot of prompts to make it do stuff unless it has a lot of stuff indexed. But yeah, I, I I've chat GPT'd my own name to see what comes up. Um, it's quite good. Cool. I did have a question going back to what we were saying about how to deal with naysayers, and mm -hmm. Susie said, so you plant argumentative posts to make people engage more. <laughs> Well, Fair chat, question. The people people argue with themselves anyway, um, but I I certainly don't worry about it. Like, yeah. Even now, like it, it's just uh, unless you pay, it's it's very hard to get to do content well. Although I'm about to go on a content blitz with Chat GPT and post like fifty times a day, but um. Yeah, like each comment is a blessing. And the extent yeah. to which you can lean into that is the extent to which you will get free reach. So it's it's really rarely that raw talent is enough. Um, I would say one of the best to do it with someone who doesn't really troll people so he has strong beliefs. I, I think Ryan Stewman is one of the best on Facebook. Um, he mm -hmm. like he just writes like two or three stories a day. He's just like going down the road to get ice cream with his kid, but he can turn it into a really good story. Uh, if I had more time amongst all the other business stuff I do, I, I would do more posts like that. But I think that's a really good example of um, a copywriter doing it right. Yeah, like I, I definitely recommend Ryan Stewman with the everyday content on his personal Facebook, which gets super high engagement. Um, but yeah, there, there, there's lots of arguments in his comments too. Religion, guns, Trump, politics. He ticks the boxes. Oh, wow. Yeah, that, I mean, that's something I struggle with as a copywriter, ironically enough, is writing my own content. I feel like I use up so much juice for my clients that when it comes to trying to engage my own audience, I'm like, I don't know what to talk about. So I do want to use AI to help me with that. Yeah, you can teach it to write as you. Uh, my friend Ravi on this live says uh, he uses chat GPT to write posts as if it were Vin Clancy. <laughs> <laughs> How um, do you do that i mean if there's not already a lot of info about you you would could you just put you can copy and paste okay yeah chunks I've, done, into it. yeah i've done that with my copywriting i'll paste a whole email i just wrote and be like write subject lines for this you have to be i find you have to be really specific to give instructions otherwise it'll spit back something really generic I'm like don't actually give away 
the entire email in the subject line, be clever, and then it'll come up with something better. Yeah, I think a lot of people who say chat GPT doesn't work, they accept the first reply. Yeah, you have to keep tweaking. I think that's yeah. so important for people to know, especially copywriters, you're going to have to continuously refine the prompts you use to get the best results. Yeah, like you never Google something twice. Like the, the first one you, you're going to choose something on, but with chat GPT, you've really got to go over and over and over and over. Um, yeah, not least in something like copy to get it out of being generic and brand safe and mediocre. Yeah, and like start a spreadsheet and collect your prompts there and, you know, keep a record because that is valuable stuff. You could potentially even sell those. <laughs> a lot of people are selling prompts these days. Yeah, it, it's it's a quick shortcut to um, fast results. Yeah, we, we've made a 1500 prompts marketing guide and another guide just for getting prompts to start new businesses with ChatGPT. Yeah, kind of like chat GPT is not like um, copywriting or drop shipping where there's a small market. It's going to touch every market in the world, law, accountancy, medicine. So if you take chat GPT to your industry and you're the first to do it, you'll have a big advantage. Yeah, I'm even seeing jobs being posted now for AI engineers like people who just their whole job is coming up with prompts and refining things and you know, yeah. training other people. I saw a job ad for prompts that was $335,000 a year yesterday. Incredible. Extra. Yeah. I think that's the same one I saw. <laughs> yeah. But I think you have to be someone who really likes, you know, tweaking things like that and experimenting and refining. It's almost like being a software developer or something where you're, you know, putting together lines of code and seeing what works. Yeah, uh, like everything, the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. And it's not as hard as you think. Yeah. So we just talked about how to use ChatGPT to help write content, but I, I saw there was something interesting in your book that stood out where you said that once you know how to leverage ChatGPT to get clients, you don't have to make as much content. Can you say a little more about that? What you mean by that? So once you have pieces, um, if, if I understand you rightly, once you have pieces of content that are winners, you just need to push them with ads. So that's oh, okay. what my agency does. We post 10 pieces of content a day. And then when we have winning pieces, we run ads to those to massively grow the number of followers and the amount of engagement on the page. Um, so yeah, so like infomercials, your best pieces of content will run for years. Like it'll probably take hundreds to find them, but there's a collection of posts that for whatever reason really hit with people and they can be shown to new markets all day, every day. So it's like when they ask Gary Vaynerchuk, in content quality or quantity and he said both at the start you need a lot of quantity to find what's working for you and your audience and then you can scale back to the quality but most people won't do that right yeah that makes sense um i know part of your bundle includes something about how to use chat gpd to get clients and that's definitely something i'm interested in because I'm finding I need to do a lot more outreach these days and at least to get the type of clients that I want to work with and not just apply for any old thing that comes across my plate. Um, is there anything you can share about like how to use ChatGBT to help with that? Yeah, so the key with ChatGPT is you can do things, you, you can create crazy um, applications that would have taken a long time before. So the jobs are out there. Like everyone knows they can just Google their job title. And, you know, they want to get hired. They're looking for a job. But mm -hmm. everyone also knows you apply and then you just know you're one of 400, 800, 1200. And it's disheartening. 
So if right. chat GPT, um, you can in like five minutes create a crazy application. So in my book, I talk about um, you know creating the perfect application, and that would mean putting in details about the company into Chat GPT and saying, "Give me ten ideas for content." You save those. Give me ten ideas how this company in this industry could make more money. You save that as a document. Um, I'm applying for this job. Um, you know, write the perfect cover letter for me, uh, including this, this, and this. And then if yeah. you're saving all of that. You, you're just at the front of the queue when you apply for that job. Oh, that's really cool. Another one is um, the, you know, if ChatGPT is doing the work, let's say you're applying for to write social media posts or to write copy, you could just email and say, um, do you want me to work free for a month? And again, no one else will ask that. And if ChatGPT is doing 90% of the work, then you know that that's mm -hmm. and because most people don't post enough content no matter what you do you're going to up their impressions by thousands within that month so you will win by giving out free trials and because chat gpt is doing the work you can do 30 of them like the, a percentage of those will convert um and it won't take you much time yeah that's great i think these are a lot of things applications people just haven't thought of yet it, it's really is limitless <laughs> it's pretty crazy yeah. yeah and for individual people you want to work with you can just feed them uh, the content into chat gpt and say make me a twitter thread and tag them on every tweet and then you know, there's no one who won't thank you if you write a 10 tweet twitter thread about them and ChatGPT can write that in 30 seconds. And if you post that on Twitter, here's everything I learned from Ravi Sandhu about accountability. Um, and you know, you want to work with Ravi Sandhu. Um, there ain't no way he's not going to at least see it and thank you. And then that, that's the beginning of a relationship. Awesome. Was there yeah. anything else, anything surprising that you talk about in the book? kind of like what we just talked about that you want to kind of pull out? Um, yeah, there, I mean, there's just unlimited things you can do with it when you spend time with it. Um, but it was a really interesting moment for me. It's kind of like there's a moment you really get what it is. And for me, it was as someone who teaches people to make money online, just realizing the power of this is just so much more than anything I've seen. And you talk about me being ahead of trends and stuff. Um, like th this, this is so much bigger than anything. Like I, I didn't plan to do another book. I didn't plan to do much as being Clancy. Like I, I have a lot of client work, so um, I, I don't need to do so much. But like it was... I would do a disservice to my audience if I didn't show them uh, chat GPT and how I use it and how they can use it, because it, it is definitely the biggest business opportunity of a lifetime. And not just that, it, it's going to take so many jobs that if you don't do it, uh, you face a very uncertain future. If you do anything on a phone or a laptop, funny thing is the real world is going to be unaffected. Serving in a bar, being a bouncer in a, in a nightclub. It's not going to touch that. It's all of us who thought we were so smart working on laptops and phones. Right. We, we will be the ones who get disrupted. Not anyone yeah. doing anything with their hands or yeah, out in the real world. But yeah, if you do anything on a phone or a laptop, somewhere in that chain, you'll get disrupted. We had a question from Shannon. I think this was about when you were talking about using it to write cover letters and things like that. She said, should you be transparent about using chat GPT in this context? Um, Shannon, if that's not what you're asking about, let me know in the comments, but I guess transparency in general is a good question. Like how often should you like even tell clients? I don't think there's a right or wrong answer, but as people who are on the cutting edge, we tend to presume everyone else is too. 
Mm-hmm. Like when people say it's overhyped, eh, less than half a percent of the world even know what chat GPT is. It's got a long way to go. Um, yeah. Likewise, I mean, already even us who think we know chat GPT content when we see it every single day, we are seeing content that we we wouldn't know if it's from chat GPT. Um, so I, I don't think, I, I don't think you stand to gain anything unless it's part of your pitch, like at the bottom of a massive document going, by the way, I did this with chat GPT, so I could do 20 of these a day for your company. I think that's a good use case of it. Um, but otherwise it, it kind of ruins the magic a little bit. Uh, I, yeah. And do you tell them when you use spell check? Same thing. <laughs> right. Or like get feedback from an A-list copy coach. I don't necessarily do that. Like, hey, yeah. I, I wrote this, but then I got feedback from the coach. I got coached on it too. I mean, that's only a benefit for the client anyway. They don't kind of need to know how the dog food's made. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm even starting to have clients who like are telling me as part of the discovery call process that they're using AI and they would want me to follow their process. So, I mean, it's, it's starting to come in more and more. I feel like the savvy clients already know and like it's a bonus to them if you can be faster, not because you're copy and pasting all your copy, but you're just, you know, how to find the information quickly. Yeah, it, it, it's going to become everything. It's like when people talk about musicians not making real music because they make it electronically, but Prince and Jimi Hendrix um, and Led Zeppelin, they use the absolute newest technology to make all their music. So it's yeah. the same thing here. Like it, it's just going to become a thing. Like no one really cares if music is made on a laptop. It's just, is the music good? right same with the output here clients don't care people don't care um it's just generally the people who aren't very good at selling or won't do the work are the ones who are hating and it's the same with musicians it's just it's like the ones who aren't really being successful will be calling it names yes agreed yeah um Can I ask a question I was sent that's more about growth hacking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's uh, it's from Daniel. What advice do you have for entrepreneurs or marketers looking to improve their growth hacking efforts and drive sustainable growth for their businesses? Kind of a general advice question, I guess. What's working now? Um, Yeah, well, using chat GPT is, is really the short answer to everything at this point. But um, me and my business partner have been talking about using AI and chat GPT to post over 50 times a day. So we, we, we wow. test this with our Facebook pages. The more posts you do, the more impressions you get on Substack. The more posts you do, the more subscribers uh, and views you get. So we are looking to scale our content efforts Um and also scale them beyond me. So that that's a big problem that every content creator on the internet has. It's just, you're only as present as how much you put in and content yeah. burnout hits everyone. So in some ways, this will allow me to scale beyond myself, you know, up to and including videoing myself with the basic movements. And it will then take a script and then have robot Vin creator so that I'll be able to That's cool. speak unlimited for Facebook reels and TikTok. Um, so every piece of content will be done in that format. And again, like, like a lot of these things, you, you will not believe how many people will be doing it in six to 12 months. Um, so it feels like an arms race, whoever can go the furthest in the next year. Wow. Yeah. So big opportunities for everyone right now. And people should jump yeah. on it. Um, 
So for this content creation process using AI, and I've, I've been seeing you do it, like I've seen so many posts per day on your LinkedIn and your, your Facebook profile, like, are you scheduling these ahead of time? <laughs> like, do you just yeah. do a big sprint at the beginning of the week or is it once a day or like? I, I well, I, I mean, I, we want to be doing like once every 30 minutes on all platforms at some point soon. Like once wow. we, we, we haven't written the full program and the, the, there'll be software needed to run parts of it too. Um, but I would say in terms of what times to post, um, uh, 8 a.m. Pacific is the number one because it hits all time zones um, from UK, Germany, right to Los Angeles, uh, mm -hmm. 12 o'clock Pacific and then uh, four o'clock Pacific. I like that. I would start with those three time zones. There's more, but most people cannot even get to free posts a day. But yeah. chat GPT will do that. Um, and yeah, there, there's so many ways to spread things out, especially using chat GPT so that one piece of content goes to multiple platforms and all platforms give you free impressions. So it adds up when you're everywhere. Nice. And do you cover this in the book too, kind of how to create content for your yeah, personal yeah, brand? The, yeah, the books, especially the personal branding one, uh, how to create that brand, how to create the content, um, how to use ChatGPT to build that brand uh, and scale it right up to and including tools like L Messenger and Linked Helper to uh, scale up your LinkedIn and Facebook and use them as an email inbox. Um, so yeah, it's uh, it, it, the good thing about personal brand and internet marketing, coaching, consulting, it like, as opposed to something like say drop shipping or, um, you know, selling a product that costs 10 bucks. It's like this stuff, yeah, with 50 followers or a hundred followers, but then two people hire you for $2,000 per month, you're free straight away. So um, it's 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 definitely worth the effort when mm -hmm. you have a ten dollar product. That's that's really tricky because your audience needs to be so big, and every single day you need to find new people um, to make the maths work. But well, yeah, when you're set when you're selling a consultancy service, it doesn't need a massive audience, um, and yeah, people understanding what internet fame is. Like people tend to think fame is your nobody or your Kim Kardashian, but me, mm -hmm. you, most of the people watching this probably are famous in a tiny corner of the internet is what I call it. Yeah. Like it's spoken on stage in front of hundreds of people and they know me, but then immediately leaving the auditorium, no one on the street knows me. But, right. you know, I, I got paid $10,000 to give that talk. You know, that's, that's, that's pretty famous. Um, yeah. But only to that tiny corner of the internet and yeah, being okay with that and leaning into that and having your own brand and your own edge. But the other thing is with the services of chat GPT, you don't need a personal brand. Like uh, that's what I put in the, how to get clients for chat GPT book. Um, it's okay not to have a personal brand too. You, you, just to do the basics on social media to show you talk what you know about and then just go hard on the client acquisition just you know apply for more roles than anyone else um you don't have to have a personal brand like there's, there's actually a lot that can go wrong with a personal brand um mm -hmm. from the brand do you post enough do the post hit with people and the, the single hardest one is is the offer right yeah, so you're putting in all that effort, of putting in all the content, and then yeah, you don't even have a good offer that people want. It's like feels like a lot of wasted time and effort. Yeah, yeah, and that was the thing when I was doing these launches, like days. Uh, some would make over fifty thousand dollars, but you just you naturally never knew until the launch happened. Like, did I get the angle right on this? is it different enough? Because you kind of, everyone is kind of selling the same thing. Um, and 
I think my launches were okay, but they really survived on me having a big audience or like, or like an engage. And a lot of people don't have that. So if they don't get that angle right on what they're selling, um, yeah, it's going to fail. And launches are so much copy, so much work, probably a webinar to go live, trying to turn that into ads straight after to promote it. So yeah, so, I mean that was that was a key learning for me is because I, I, my thing has been teaching people about content and personal branding, and then for finding ChatGPT was like you, you might just want to sell services now, like you you might want to simplify what you're doing, get a few uh, clients that will pay for your services. ChatGPT is going to do the service, and then you don't have to worry about being a personal brand. Um, which a lot of people don't do. Yeah. No one wants to be on video, myself <laughs> included, by the way. Like, good, uh, news and that's, for, good news for introverts. Yeah, yeah, because you can do so much copy. But with the AI video, uh, yeah, it, 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 it will soon be the case. I guess that's probably a good case study that I should probably start soon. Um, that AI is, is going to be me talking on video through a script. And I won't be doing it live. That'll be really interesting. Yeah. You used to do a lot more live coaching. Are you offering any coaching now with your uh, chat GPD bundle? Let's talk about your offer for a second. Or like this last five minutes. So, so free to I think. Pitch it. What, yeah. Um, what we're thinking of doing is um, like. So for instance, me growing my profile to over a million followers in one year and then creating a program with a hundred people who do that with me. So I only coach with them. Here's how I do it. So that could be a course that we run. Um, and otherwise I coach people on request. Um, because we're, we're really just trying to scale the info products themselves because right. this isn't like growth hacking where you have to have, you really you have to have a business that exists already for growth hacking to work. This chat GBT is for everyone, every job in the world. So we have a long, long, long way to go with this book to get it into the hands of everyone in the world anyway. So that, that's what we're focusing on. But we may do that one coaching class to grow personal brands using this system where we post over 50 times a day. And most of it is done through ChatGPT. Right, because that's what your agency does right now for companies. Yeah, yeah. So, there was, so we, um, yeah, we grow massive retargeting audiences for companies so that they can run cheaper ads. Um, and uh, yeah, it's crazy how many millions of people you can reach on Facebook without paying. And people still don't understand that. But yeah, that's that's our agency offering, creating massive audiences so that ads are cheaper. Very cool. Um, so what else is in your chat GPT bundle? I know you have so, you've got the main book, which again is this 50 ways to make at least is it 10k in the next 30 days? Yeah, so I, I think the major difference between my all of my books in chat GPT and everyone else is that we we are the only ones specifically focused on how to make money with it. Now, almost every well, every other product I've ever seen on ChatGPT presumes you have a business that's working or you know exactly what you want to do. But every single ChatGPT product I see is here are prompts. Here's how to do marketing with it. Here's how to do copywriting with it. Um, here's how to do sales with it. And something I realized when I started my Substack, where I, and the main people on my Substack are people who've been following me years. Is mm -hmm. even after all these years, a lot of my entrepreneur friends they was they still weren't set on what they wanted to do. Like I would do coaching calls with them, and they'd be pitching me two different ideas, or they're doing something that they're not passionate about, and that yeah. 
reminded me that um, most people, the massive majority, they they don't quite know what they want to do, or they're not happy with what they want to do, or they want to do something else. So chat GPT to them, um, they don't need another prompt guide. Um, they need, how do I make money with it? So that that's really yeah. the only thing, the, the thread throughout all of my books. And uh, uh, yeah, I, I haven't, we haven't seen anyone else do it. Um, so that's the only thing we talk about in all of the books, specifically how to make money with it. It's like NFTs and cryptos. People couldn't just, they, they wouldn't just admit they're in it for the money. Um, they would have to say, I believe in the technology. I believe in the block. <laughs> I don't believe in it. They just want to make money with it. And that's fine. It's, you know, just, but just be honest with it. Uh, and it's the same thing here. People don't care about the chat GPD technology. We know they just want to make money with it. So that's that's what we write. And that's how they can have the biggest effect in the world. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. And yeah, I know you also have some prompt engineering guides yeah, that come yeah. with your book, how to use it to make money fast on Twitter, mm -hmm. time savers, AI superpowers, 20 tools that will give you a massive advantage. So yeah, there's a lot of stuff you're offering along with this book. Um, you can get it at chatgptbundle.com, but I also put the link below. Yeah. So, yeah, there you go. Oh, I have one personal question to finish this off. So you used to really like peacock when you went on stage. <laughs> uh, speaking events, you wore like gold winged shoes and crazy floral suits and stuff like that. Do you still do that? Um, I do, but I only wear designer clothes now. Ooh la la. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> people react. Like the YSL t-shirt you're wearing. Louis Vuitton. Oh, Louis Vuitton. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Duh. LV. It looks like a YSL from here. Yeah. Uh, people react to you differently in America if you wear designer clothes. I, I, I don't so true. believe in it, but it works. And when I started going back to America last year, pe people reacted differently to me. So, um, yeah, so it, it's about understanding the power of that. It's, it's like religion. You don't have to, um, whether it's true or not is irrelevant. If it helps people, it's good. That's the same with talking to girls about um, star signs. That's mm -hmm. not true either, but it can help you if you talk to a girl about star signs and astronomy as if you believe in it. Does that make sense? Sure, you can find some common ground. Yeah, yeah, so it doesn't have to be true for it to be useful. And it's the same with designer clothes. You have to wear something. Um, so yeah, you, you may as well wear something useful for your perception. Yeah, it's kind of like you can wear crazy stuff to be eye-catching and stand out when you're starting out. And then later, once you've made it, it's like people want to see that reflected. It's not like, I mean, everyone's tired of the posing in front of Lambos thing, but I think, yeah, presenting yourself well with designer clothes. I mean, you kind of expect that once someone's in the millionaire range or getting there. Everything is marketing. Yeah. <laughs> Everything is marketing. We can end on that note. Yeah. All right. Great. This was a nice chat. Yeah, thanks for coming to my group. You're helping me revive it as well. So great. Yeah. Send me the recording when it uh, comes through. Will do. All right. Thanks for coming. Cheers. Bye. Bye. All right. That was awesome. Thank Facebook. you. I'm still on my Facebook Live. You see it here? <laughs> I do. I hope your That's voice came through while I'm watching. Ellen yeah. Angel says, hello from Athens, Greece. Hello, Ellen. Ravi, are you still on? What's good? Ravi was um, very active. Yeah. 
Let me take this outside. Oh, I can't. All right. I might eat breakfast now. I have to get up <laughs> for this. All right. Thanks again. I'll send you my questionnaire. Great. All right. Business coaching. All right. Cool. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.